Ahoy there mateys and welcome back to the Balcony Marina. Now you love that video so much, I had a great response to it, that we are back and I'm going to do the most requested thing, which is how do you turn one of these, right? And slap a few planks on it and end up with something as lovely as this. All right, that's actually my Constructo bounty. There you go, look how that's improved, yes. So would you like to see how that's done? Roll the music. All right, so our aim is to get our hull planked nice and smoothly, as you see I've done here on the Constructo Bounty. All right, everything is very curvy and smooth, and the planks are all parallel, but they are curved to the shape of the hull. So down here you'll see they're curved exactly on the shape of the hull, right up here, and then they meet very nicely on what's called the whale line, okay? And that's why I've got two different colours on this one, because with my ship the bottom of it was painted white. Now I didn't want to paint my ship, I want to do it all in wood, so I'm using white planks here, and then I'm using those lovely brown planks on the top there, which I hope is going to give me a great effect. There's a um, very dark piece here, um, a piece of ebony or something or other, um, dark, dark wood. And that's going to go across here, which will be the whale line. And um, that'll give a nice demarcation between the two. But that's what you're here for. You want to know about planking. All right, so first off, okay. For the purpose of this video, we'll assume you've made this already. You've assembled this up, which is your frame, okay. And that includes the false keel, which is what this is. You end up putting a proper keel on that afterwards. Sometimes, sometimes it's all included, but we'll call it false keel. And then you've got all your former shapes, which give the whole shape to the hull. Now it's worth noting with these, in the middle, the middle three or four will be pretty well identical. They're usually very close. And so there, you'll have exactly the same number of planks and they'll be spaced exactly the same way. Now as you come to the bow, it will basically go more this sort of teardrop shape. So it'll, uh, it'll change that way. And at the stern, okay, at the stern you get a different shape altogether because what happens is it comes down but then it kind of scallops out this way. So you get a complex lot of curves. You've got a curve, it starts like that, and then it'll curve up, over, and then across, okay? Whereas down here, essentially, you'll just usually get a curve down to your false keel. Now, one thing to do at this point is to prepare your frame, okay? Now, if you have a look sideways on, of course, these aren't very wide. They're probably only about five or six millimeters wide, but they're flat and each one's flat. So if I was to put a plank on there, a nice short one here, okay. Can you see that, of course, one side is touching and one side's floating in the air, all right? There's no way you want it to sit flush. See, if we go back to the middle, the midships here, where they're all basically pretty well the same size, that will sit on there, nice spot between those two, nice and flat, okay? But as you go down, we've got angles. Now, what you've got to do is called fair the um, frame, okay? So you basically get your file. Here's just a little one, because you can do it with a small file, although well, a big file is good. And with that, you can lay it across, and you can see straight away that you've got high points and low points, and you can simply file until you basically take that ridge off there and that ridge off there, okay? Don't go further than the middle of it, all right? So just take a little bit off, a little bit off, because basically then you've got to go to this one and it's going to require a slightly different, it'll require a slightly different angle. So you basically just keep doing that. Then you come back with the plank, once you sort of fold a bit and have a look. And you should end up with that perfectly flat, when, no matter where the plank's sitting. I cannot emphasize that enough, especially here at the bow, because you'll notice yeah, look, there's no way that that's actually sitting on that correctly. And especially here, you can see it's, it's sitting up in the middle of the air, right? So this all needs to be fared into shape. Another trick you can use, and I'll show a photo here, is you can put blocks of balsa in here. And that's what I like to do. It's called chocking. And I would chock the front, the whole front of the thing, because this shape here is the hardest one to plank. Like when you're trying to put planks over in mid-air, it doesn't work. And that's what went wrong with that bounty. 
Um, the other people were trying to plank. They had nothing down there. They hadn't feared their hull. So they're only working on these tiny thin edges to get their curves and it's too hard. And there's no way you can stick your nails in and make it uh, fit properly. If you chock it and you fair it, right? Sometimes all you've got to do is basically bend your pank and glue it on. Because if it's the right shape, there's no real issue. And I managed to do that very successfully when I repaired the bounty. As you get to the stern, you'll have a similar problem. So again, fairing and smoothing so that basically that, that tricky shape um, is reflected in how the planks sit on there. If your ship is single planking, then you'll just have one set of planks that'll all be about two millimeters. These are 0.5, okay? If you've got a double planked hull, which is the nicest and easiest way, it's strange, isn't it? Doing it twice is easier than doing it once, believe me, because you have got much more forgiveness. Uh, but basically, you can really work on that first layer and mess around with it till you get it smooth without having to worry that it's pretty. And then you make pretty with your second layer, which will be the thin planks. So then you'll have like one and a half millimeter planks, which will be the first layer, and um, the second layer are these tiny 0.5. And if you've got your fairing done correctly, and then you have got that first layer of planks on and you've smoothed and sanded it all, when you go to put the 0.5 millimeter, which will be the good quality wood, that will just glue straight on. You won't need any nails, nothing. And that's what I did. That's how I got my bounty looking so good, is I did two layers of planking. So how do we know how many planks will fit on this curved surface? Because if you try and use a rule, it's, it's, it's a bit tricky and they tend to slip. What you need is either your um, mother, girlfriend, sisters, or whatever, sewing measuring tape, right? <laughs> just nice and flexible, okay? Or you can make your own. I just made this one out of paper. I just cut this out of paper and mark it off against that rule. Now, all you've got to do is place it basically at the end, run it along, and there you go. You've got your measurement. So in this case, at the middle of the hull, which will be the widest point usually, I've got 112 millimetres, okay? Now if I'd had 120 millimetres and I've got 6 millimetre blanks, I would have got 20, okay? Is everybody okay with that math? All right. 10 6 millimeter planks is 60, so 20 6 millimeter planks is 120. I'm just one shy of that, and in fact, that plank may need to be trimmed a little bit. So I'll need 19. So for this one, I'll need 19, but this isn't the bounty's hull. When I did the bounty, I needed 23 per side. Okay, but as you go along, things are going to change and change dramatically. So when I get down to here, say, near the stern, and I measure. 13. Okay. Oh, I need more planks at the stern. Yes, you will, but you don't basically do it that. What you do is you say, okay, I need 19, which is going to give me basically uh, about uh, 114 millimeters, right? And I run those. What happens at the stern is they tend to flare out and then you put little wedges in, okay? You put little triangular wedges. I don't know if I've got one here. All right, so you put a little wedge in which will create that space. And that's perfectly okay, that is what you do. I will show you. All right, so here's the bounty. And you'll hardly even see them. There is a wedge there. Can you see it? All right, so that is the bottom plank, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, that's a very important plank. And then the very first plank after that, it actually curved up. And I made it curve up. Well. I let it curve up. That's where it wanted to go. And that created my first wedge. So in it went. And it looks perfectly okay. Now what you don't want is wedges at the bow. In fact, you shouldn't have wedges at the bow. Because the bow, it tends to get narrower, all right? Although I've done a specific kind of planking here, which is not always applicable. And then I basically, as I've done that section one color, I've done this section the other color, and I've let all my planks bend up. That's a way to do it. That's certainly a way. There are a number of ways to do it. You can also do what a lot of people do, which is basically you taper your planks. So your planks will get thinner and they will taper towards the bow and then they'll all match up nicely. Okay, so we'll talk about those various planking tricks and the various techniques shortly. But what you're aiming for all the time is you're aiming that your planks will be basically parallel to the keel. Okay, so there's keel. So you're parallel pretty well all the way through midships, but at the stern, it's going to curve up and over, okay? 
So you see there how I've made all those very thin, that's all curved in and over, and I've used wedges down here when I needed to or it was all splayed out. Because you can see here as it changed direction. It's vertical and then it curves up and then it curves back. These are quite complex curves, but that's okay, you can cope. In the bow, basically I have tapered them, but not a lot, because I wanted this sort of look where basically they all come up. Uh, as opposed to what they were doing over here, which is a right raw mess. And they have made an absolute mess by basically breaking a lot of the planking rules. Now the planking rules, there are only a couple, they're very simple, okay? Um, you will tape up the bow, okay, which means you start with that full width in the middle, because that's why we used our measuring tape. We worked out for that, for that particular um, frame, we'll need 19. So you start with your full width, and away you go, and then you will slowly get thinner and you will taper towards the bow and they'll meet up nicely. Now with your tapers, you only ever taper the top part of the plank. You never taper the bottom part of the plank and there's a good reason for that. And it's why these planks here are all bent out of shape. Because what's happened is, if you, if you try and taper the bottom of it and you're keeping the top straight, the way the wood will bend is it will do this, it will buckle out and you'll end up with that. And there's no way you can get it flat. But as you can see with mine, with the tapering, that is perfectly smooth. Alright? That is smooth. You could play billiards on that. Alright? And that's because they're tapered on the top. Alright? And the same with all of these. The top part of the plank has the taper. Now if you can imagine the way that's going to curve, it wants to curve up at the bow. So if you take a little bit off the top and you let the plank basically follow its normal line, it will take that top part up further. Maybe I can illustrate it by showing you. So here is a plank, right? And if I lay it across here, do you notice what it does? It goes up to the top. See that? So I'm straight, right? I'm parallel here. And then if I just let it bend naturally, it wants to go up to the top. Okay? So it's pointing up that way. It's not pointing down that way. Okay? So if I wanted to make that to the next plank, I would cut a bit off here. And that's what I do. I taper that bit off the top. And if I'm always tapering off the top of the planks, they pretty well lie exactly as they should. And that solves so many of your problems. If you are fighting your planking, if you're fighting the hull and the way the shape it is, you'll have a nightmare of a job. No amount of bending, no amount of cursing and cussing and hammering will solve your problem. It will just keep pushing out. And the whole thing is you don't want your hull to be so sprung because you've got planks bent so far that as they dry they try and rip the whole thing they try and you know basically like like shock absorbers push everything back again. And that's how people warp their frames. Now with this one, I broke one other rule, which is you should plank in pairs. You should always plank on one side than the other. But I was repairing this, okay? And I was doing it to illustrate for the video. So I broke that rule. But normally, if we have a clean hole, like so, right, we would plank one or two planks on that side, one or two planks here. And then we'd move down one or two. Okay, the next section is planking sections. Now, when you do your planking, one of the easiest methods that I found, and it's the one that I used and I had no trouble at all, is to consider your planking in three sections. You're going to have this top section here, right, which in my bounty was just all the brown planks, and that's pretty well straight up and down, as you can see. There will be a little bit of tumble home, right, because tumble home or straight, you know, basically as it curves back up, but basically you'll have a section here that's nice and straight. So those planks can butt up against each other. They do not require any beveling. They may just need a little bit of tapering. Most of my planks didn't even need tapering, the brown ones on the bounty. Okay, so you have an easy section here. Then another section is down at the bottom here. Okay, you have your garboard. Now your garboard is the very first plank that you put at the keel. Okay, now the garboard breaks the planking rules. It is the only plank that you will taper probably from the bottom because usually what happens is the garboard when it runs I'll find a shorter one I'll show you this when the garboard plank runs along okay you notice here you can see it about on the back side okay okay it's it's basically poking out on the bottom of the boat. I know it's the top of the screen. You with me? So you actually trim it. 
what did I show you on the bounty? Okay, so here's a garboard plank, and it just looks like it's sitting there naturally, but actually it has a taper on its bottom. It's the only plank that does, because that's how it sits, because the garboard would sit out. If I hadn't have tapered that, see, it would sit out straight. So what I have done is I have tapered that. So it's the only one you do back to front. And then once it's in, it gives you a perfectly level line for doing all the rest of your planks. So this section, half of this bottom section, is the curve, okay? Is basically the majority of the curve. And it's the area where you're gonna get most of your wedges, and it's the area where you're really going to have to get the curve and the tapering in for, for the, basically for the bow. Once you have succeeded in doing that third, this middle third is relatively easy because by then you have got the shape, the shape has stopped curving this way and curving that way. You've got a pretty easy run. So that becomes the third section you do. So it's sort of a bit weird. You'd start at the top and you do this first section from usually level with the deck, the bounty kit from Constructor has a very weird way of doing that, but we won't confuse you in this video. Normally you would start your first section level with the deck and you would plank down. And then you would go down you do this garbled kill, you, uh, you put it in, the garbled plank on the kill, right? And you would just cut that little section off there, which is sort of taper, but it's ran the wrong way. And then you would start planking up to a midpoint here on the turn. Okay, so this is the, the turn here. This is from relatively flat it turns here at the wall, and then the middle of the turn is a point that you aim for. Now, to work those out, because they will help you with your tapering, so we'll discuss that next. Alright, we've got three sections, okay? Now, as a rough guess, they're the same length each. They don't appear that. When you look side on, your first section, which is going down to that wall line, appears like it's halfway. So it, it appears halfway, but really, when you actually turn the, the ship over like this, that whale line's way up there, and you've actually got another two thirds. So you can approximately, in most cases, there's different ships have different applications, but at least for these kind of ships that I'm doing, you basically have one third, which is nice and easy and fairly, don't even require much tapering planks, and they don't require any beveling. You then have a third, which are coming up from the keel, which require quite a bit of tapering, they require wedges, and they'll also require um, basically beveling, because you're basically turning in and turning out as you're going through. We'll talk about more of that later. So how do we work all this out and then work out where they're going to be? Okay, we go back to our middle part of our ship, and we know we've got 112, right? So we need a third of that, okay? So, and you need it in multiples of planks. So if we've got 19 there, all right, three sixes are 18, I've got six millimeter planks, right? Three sixes are 18, there's gonna be an extra one. So basically, I could go six, have a whale line, go six to the midpoint of the turn, and then six down to here. Or I could count my garboard plank as one and then have the 18, let's do it that way. Either way, you, you just gotta kinda of work out third. So let's measure that first. Either way, six planks is 36. So 6, 6, 36, I've got a mark. All right, so that is basically the top of my whale. And then six planks of six is 36. There's my middle point to aim to. And then I'll have basically 36, and there'll be just enough left for my garbled down here, which is the plank that sits against the keel. So I've got three sections. Now what you need to do is get a plank, there's no wetting or wooding or anything here, and you want to sit it on that line there. And this is where you can use these tricky little clips. Okay, so that's basically where that's going to be. And then I want to know level, so usually there'll be a couple of these which are the same length. Alright, so we'll say these two are, they should be. that one in place. Okay, so that's my point. What you do then is you 
have a look and see where that plank naturally sits. All right. Without forcing it, you just let it flow. Probably need a bit more of it on this side. Okay, and we'll just see where that goes to. You then get your measure and you'll measure all the distances for where that goes to. So let's just put a few more of these little clips on. Would you like to know how to make these clips? They're really easy. You can buy expensive ones and spend lots of money. Or you can do what Harry Houdini did. He's found, found a way to do it. It's actually not my idea. Someone else had a video on YouTube and I went, that is fantastic. I thought I can make those. Okay, so just clip these little buggers in. They're very handy while you're building the ship. They'll even hold planks in place while they're drying when you've bent them. So now I would start measuring some things. Now with here, because you've got a higher section at the stern, you would also need to know the line here of basically that deck. So you need to put a plank in that would be basically level with the deck. You can still work it out because you can basically pencil it, all right? Because it's got to be there. It's got to be there. So you want to know that distance. Now, here you know it's six planks, or 36, because that's, that's the decision that you made, okay? As you go along and you get to here, we've only got 24. So at this point here, 24, we're only going to get four of our six millimeter planks in. So how do you accomplish that? Well, you use a trick whose name escapes me right at the moment. You use this sort of trick. I've got three planks here, and then I've gone down to two planks. Okay. Now another rule in planking is you never ever taper them less than half. So if you've got a six millimeter wide plank, once it gets to three millimeters wide, that's as far as you take it. You stop at that point and you put in one of these. All right. So you basically, if you've got two planks and they come down to three millimeters each, you stop, you cut at that point, and then you put in a six millimeter plank. Here I had three of these, and basically at that point I realized that was 12. All right, so I actually got those to four millimeters each. They were looking pretty thin, and I realized I could just put in two sixes there and then run them to the stern, and that's what I did. Now, I didn't do the best job there, and I really need to learn how to do this properly, because one of the better ways to do it is you do it in triangles. You actually cut, you don't cut this way, right? But you actually cut them as little triangles. I'll put the name on the screen of what this is called because I forget. But basically, that is the sort of trick that you're looking for. That's the only spot that I did it on this entire hull. I used some wedges and I did one of these little step downs here. Now, I suppose if I'd been clever, I could have probably done a single step down say here, and there may be a few few um, planks further down, I could have done another single step down and made it as less fussy. And I might do that when I do the video, when I do the other side, having learnt that lesson now, I might um, realise when I'm getting sort of down here that I need to do maybe these two planks, I'll, I'll take them down to basically you know, three millimetres each, um, and then I'll run just one plank off there and the same here. Now how do you make one of these little clips which are fantastic for holding planks on your hull because this little part pushes down the plank and this part clips onto the ribs. You need two. You need two to make one and a half. You actually need three. <laughs> if you, you've got three of these you can make two clips. And what you do is one will remain the same, one you sacrifice off its little arm. Okay, And then all you do is you open that up and shove him in there. Well, when we do that again, it's really not that hard. Okay, so here's a clip that you've got. You've stolen an arm off that one there. You open it up. You pop that arm inside. So you can see it in there. There's the arm. It's in there. And that gives you a wonderful way to basically 
block planks while you're working on them. Right? Is you can even like tilt it to push them down, and they hold in place beautifully. Now we need to work out the planks for the rest of the ship. Okay, so we'll just assume, and I won't go into too much detail. You have measured all of these, right? All of these ribs, and you have written down the length, and you know. Well, we assume here four planks here so at some point here will be five planks and then in the middle six planks so you're going to have to have some of these little step downs to say well you take you basically take two planks down to one and the same in the bow you'll, you'll measure measure that and you'll go oh dear okay well it's again it's probably going to go down to 24 probably only going to get four planks in there same way probably here very very close by I'll probably get five so you're going to have some step downs as well okay so you can do it that way Unless you want to do what I did, and I actually forced the plank down level, so I didn't have any step downs at all. That's another way to do it. So I wanted a much neater bow. I did just want a continuous planks, basically from the wire line up. So I actually did that, and I forced that plank and I bent it. Now that is a risk because you could end up with that horrible look as as they did. But at this point where it's fairly level, right, we, it's fairly level here and hasn't started to curve, you can kind of get away with tricks like that. So I did, on the on the bounty, I did seven planks where I didn't taper at all, so they're all nice and straight. And then I started tapering them. But that's a choice. And you just make your decision there, how am I going to do this? All right, so we assume you've, you've got all these and you've put your marks in. And now you work out your garboard plank. That's going to sit here nicely, okay? Now this garboard plank, it has a hell of a job because it starts off flat and then at the stern here it turns 90 degrees like that. So it's a bugger of a thing and it's a real twist for you to do which really requires a lot of soaking that plank in water when it's thick and twisting it. But it's doable and uh, as long as you have fared your hull and everything's the way it should be and if you put blocks in at the end you're going to make your life a lot easier when you're doing these sort of things okay so that was i think that will be about five millimeters this one because remember we were just short of getting uh basically full 19 planks in that we were one millimeter short so our garble plank we actually trim one millimeter off it and it'll only be a five millimeter plank and then we basically taper the bottom side over here to fit on okay now you would then mark all the way along there and you'd mark for your garbled okay and then you have this distance because you know this is now you've marked that all the way along so you've got these two right so you've got your first section you've marked all those you know what they are you know what your tapering is going to have to be now you've got these two sections here what you need to know is in the middle here how does the hull perform? How much does it curve? Because again, we'd rather not fight the planks. So let's have a look. Here's that position there. And again, I'll use my little clips. What you want to do now is say, okay, well, how does this lie and how does this sit? All right, so there it goes. It sits quite nicely to there. Okay. And it seems to be quite happy and it's sitting quite nicely to there. All right, now our other our whale line was up here. Okay, our whale line went across to there. Now you notice this is coming up now, okay? It's no longer level, and it's coming up here. That's the natural curve of your hull. That's something to take note of and something that I wouldn't fight. I wouldn't fight that at all. I would go, okay, that is the shape of your ship. So I would then measure over here and remember we have got six we have got six planks and then a garboard so we've basically got 42 millimeters okay remember the garboard plank was taking that odd one the number 19th plank then we had three lots of six from the 18 stay with me it's a bit of math i know but anyhow so um 36 well right here i have got 45 so i'm already three millimeters too much That'll need a bit of wedging here, and you include this flat bit of the keel. All right, clips in the way, but I have got 54. All right, so my 36 
is going to require quite a bit of wedging if I've got 54. I'm going to need 18 mil wedging, which means three six millimeter planks are going to have to wedge in there. That's right. You, the wedging becomes very natural once you get there, because you put the plank in, you go to put the next one in, and you see that they naturally part. And this is what happened on the bounty here, okay? So here's my garboard plank there, okay? And then there was the next plank, and naturally a wedge appeared. It just wanted to sit that way. So I didn't fight it at all. I then measured what that wedge would be, how long it would be, how wide it was here, and basically created a triangle. It's very easy to do. Um, you make it out of a bit of scrap, it's not hard to do. So it's quite long. It went from all the way from there to there, and basically that was about a, it was under six, about a five millimeter wedge. And then away I went and they sat nicely, but then over here I found those two planks were not happy. They needed to part a little bit. I didn't fight it, I put a little wedge. And along I went again, I was fine through here, through the middle part, which had tapering, which basically, and again, the, the curve is changing. So the needs are changing constantly as to what the planks need to do. And at that point there I realized I needed another wedge. So there's one there. You probably can't see it. So I just let the wedges happen. You can plan them and then force planks into positions. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can just let it do what it wants to do and, and don't fight it. Okay, that'll be the best thing. Because if you're really pushing that hard to get a plank in and bending it so viciously, you probably shouldn't be putting it in there. So what we have now is we have three points marked. I assume we have, okay. So. And we would have marked them all the way along. While we had that test blank on, we would have penciled them all the way along. So we would have all our measurements. Well, we could take them. They're, they're penciled in. You could measure this one, the lower part, the top part, and the middle part. Okay? And then you can decide how much tapering you need to do. You create a table like this. And the table will tell you basically in the middle it's probably no tapering at all they're probably exactly in this case six millimeters probably for about four or so of the formers right they're nice and straight it's no problem and then slowly they probably will go down to like five and a half and then five and then they'll start dropping quite a lot to four to three and that's how it sort of goes now then how do you taper a plank how do you do it okay tapering now if you use the method that I have used, where you divide your hull into three sections, your tapering is a lot easier. You could individually put every plank down, work out how it curves and taper, and each one will be a, a bespoke plank that fits only there and away you go. And that's probably more like the way they did the rail ships, you know, they really really paid attention to each plank and made sure it's correct. That's hard work. and that you can end up with a lot of problems with that unless you're an absolute skilled craftsman. Now I'm pretty good at woodwork, I didn't want to attempt that. So by using this three section method, the first section, which was right at the top, okay, now pretty well most of the planks all the way through to the stern are basically going to be your plank width, six millimeters. To the bow, they may need to just taper in a little bit if you want that sort of shape. So they'll probably only go down to five. So you basically have all of this and you'll only need to put a little bit of a curve on the top of the plank at, uh, for about, you know, the last end. And you'll know that because you have measured all your distances and you made up a little table. So how do you get that nice and smooth? Well, first you draw it. You get a plank and you put your measurements on there and you draw it. And then what I use is this. It's a mini plane. Right? Very light mini plane. And I put all the planks that I'm going to use. So I would put all seven planks or all six planks I want for section. I put them in a vise. Here's a photo. And I'd have them all ready to go and then I would simply run my little plane. It's already it's already taken over, and very gently work my way along. What you do with these is you just start very gently with the first part, and you keep going, you keep going, and you dig, and you get on. It takes a bit of practice. I, I'm quite good with planning. I always seem to have a natural knack for it. But um, what you want to do is probably practice on something else first, a bit of scrap wood, and get the hang of how these work. You need to also set them very fine. Like mine takes off a puff tenth. It's the tiniest amount. Okay, so I can run my finger over that. It's not really sticking out hardly any. 
And once you've got that tiniest bit, then that's what your plane is going to be the best setting for it. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? And so you'd use that and away you go. If you bugger it up, okay, because you, you would have lines, nice big black lines there to show you where to tape it to. If you bugger it up, you would just have to basically waste those planks, uh, use them for something else and try, try again. Now, the middle section is probably going to have tapers front and back. All right. Despite the fact of those wedges, which you did use down here in the bottom section, this middle section will be actually quite thin, the planks. They'll probably need to go right down. And as I said, you might have to have those step downs because you might find that it says those should be two millimeter wide, but well, you can't. You don't want to do that if they're three, six millimeter planks. So you'd have to find the point of where they're three and then at that point step down and go back to six millimeter planks or four millimeter, cut them to four. You'd work out what you want to do. So we know that here it was four planks there, 24, but we knew here it's six planks, 36. So somewhere in the middle here is five planks of 30. I'll explain more about that in another video because that's, it's got to be sharp exactly how that works but you work your step downs and away you go at the bow you will have um, basically quite a bit of tapering you don't have as much especially with this kind of shape hole you don't have as much straight away here okay that first section won't need much tapering the top we hardly had any but the middle section as it comes in well if you want to basically if you want them all to go all the way to the stem here which I didn't do on my bounty, but you know, if you want that look, then you're going to have quite a bit of tapering, and you may even have some step downs if you end up getting very slim. But working three sections, all the planks in the top section will be tapered the same, all the planks down the bottom the, to the garboard will be tapered the same, and all the planks in the middle here will be tapered the same. The only exceptions are your step downs. When you get to those step down points, then you'll have to calculate and work out what they need to be so they'll be slow so if these two planks here come down and they're at three millimeters each so that's the width six the step down plank here starts at six and then it will go down to whatever whatever you need it to be and if it needs to step down again away you go you try not to do too many step downs you really need to get a feel for it but um you you just have to do them there's sort of no other way but that is the neatest way to do it uh, if you sort of try making great big long banana shaped things, I think they did that here on this bounty. Yeah, they, uh, they tried to put little bananas in here. It looks ghastly. It looks horrible. And when you end up sort of sanding and varnishing this, look at this here. It's it's tapered, tapered down. You don't. That's wrong. You need wedges. I don't know if they've got any wedges. Oh yeah, they put their wedges in. They put one in there. Well, it's, it's just all wrong. See, nothing's level, nothing's parallel. They really have not had the right plan. They may have started at the top here and tried to work all the way down to the bottom. That doesn't work. I know a lot of the manuals say do that, but honestly, you need to work up from the bottom, you need to work down from the top, and then you need to work the planks in the middle. That is your safest way to do it, as far as I've found. That will avoid all these problems. So that is the result if you use that method that I used. And look, there are many ways to do it, as I outlined in the video, and there's obviously a lot more complex than that. But this video was just to wet your appetite and see if you like the idea of planking and also to dispel some of the myths and show that really, as long as you have a plan and a method, it's not that hard, okay? So maybe some of you are going, well, I can get right into that straight away. But for the rest of you, if you want more detail, I'm going to do a series of videos on how to basically turn this horrible, this wrecked planking here, where um, they made a lot of the mistakes that I outlined in the video of what to avoid, and we will end up with this, okay? So I will do the port side on this, and I will video every step of it and show you in detail where every nail and every plug and every plank and everything goes, all right? <laughs> so we've got that to look forward to if you sort of want to watch planking. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> yes, Houdini, you walk the plank for this. All right, that's enough of that. Well, that's it for this video. That's all I've got to say. So until next time, it's goodbye from Australia and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.